Doctrine and Devotion is sponsored by Lagos Bible Software. I know they want to call it Logos, but it's Lagos. Yeah, you're wrong, guys. Man, Lagos is a great sponsor. They sponsored us before. We use their stuff all the time, but they are going to do a giveaway for our listeners. Yeah, they, oh, well, you know what? How about you guys find out later in the show? Stay tuned. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Ooh. Ooh. We, Here we are. We, we are made in it. Wellington, New Zealand. At yeah. the, there we go. At the X29 Biblical Theology Conference. Yeah. This is, uh, this was, it's been, it's been, we've been waiting to get here. We've oh, been yeah. excited to get here. Really pumped. It's an epic trip getting here. It was like big. It was fun. 20 something hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a little long. It was long. It was, it long. was long. Lots of people. Wasn't the, the air, the true air, air travel was smoothie, was smooth. Like that the, was nice. there was no, no turbulence there. That was good. There I enjoy that. There might have been a little turbulence between us on the <laughs> on the flight. It was a little. There's always a bit of a, I don't know. There's always a fight. Yeah, or a every time we travel. Every yeah. time we travel. Well, I don't know. Listen. So you got you got the. I got started in a bad mood because you, you, Jimmy got us a limo ride to the airport because Jimmy doesn't drive to the airport. So, I don't drive. No, no. why? Well, yeah, I don't drive. Listen, here's the thing. I don't expect you to drive me to the airport, and I'm not going to drive you. So instead of you know asking you to drive me, I have somebody else I don't know drive me and then pay them. He also he doesn't drive his mom to the airport. No, pick I her refuse. Up. He my hires mom, a limo. <laughs> yeah, my mom's like, hey, Jimmy, you should. Mijo, mijo, tres. I'm like, okay, mom, I'll let the guy know. <laughs> Just so bad. So we get the limo, and uh, you know, because I'm old, I took a nap on yep. the way because it was the stretch limo. I was taking a nap, and then he yells at me to get up, like, "Wake up, we're here!" And I spaz out, and I broke my glasses. They're all taped yeah, up. They're, they're, you can see they're, they're all taped. taped up because they, they don't. They, I broke them. So within yeah, thirty it, minutes of the trip, Joe broke yeah. his glasses. That's yeah. a that's a record for him. All right, and then we were um, we were on the plane on the plane one of the, one of the legs of the flight, and Jimmy had bought us because we're flying first class, right? Jimmy had used his air miles yeah. so we could go first class. It, where you get the pod and you could lay down, yeah. and they bring yeah. you the really the, generous of you guys. Yeah. I know. Thank uh, you. Just, Jimmy, just hold your applause. It's okay. He said, "I gotta pay you anyway," and he's gonna. Yep. So um, Jimmy's like, "Hey." I got an idea. We'll get matching silk pajamas to wear <laughs> on the flight. And, and we so wear, I did. He, I, he bought us matching silk pajamas. I had, I had purple ones and I got Joe some blue ones. Yeah. But then he made me carry my own pajamas, which is not so, okay, reasonable. Hold, by reason, okay. Raise your hand. Was that like un, unfair of me to expect him to carry his own silk okay, pajamas? No, no, it wasn't. But when well, I is told that, you. Is that rude of me? When I told individual? you I couldn't do it, I said, listen, I don't have room in my bag for it. I looked at you and you're like. Too bad. And so, why couldn't you just uh, say, the hey, point Jimmy, is, why couldn't you just say, Jimmy, could you please carry you these for me? You, you should had, just know. If you had you said that, I would have said, oh, hey, Joe, right. yeah, sure. We're, we're going to talk about the thing. So, anyways, he didn't do that. And what happened next? I, lo- I lost my silk pajamas. <laughs> he lost Sorry, the Jimmy. silk pajamas. But you know what I did? I found your Apple pencil. How about that? that? He stole That's how I made from up for me it. a month and a half no, ago. No, no. I found your Apple pencil. Joe, within the m- last month and a half, when I couldn't find my Apple pencil, what happened? Well, you had to go buy a Apple. I pencil. went and bought another yeah. Apple pencil because you lost your other one. Yeah, actually, you know what? I bought it the day we were coming here. I, know. I rushed over. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna go get it. Yeah. Bought one, got on the plane, and it wasn't until we got to New Zealand. Yeah, in I, Wellington. Yeah, in Michael's car. Did Joe go? Now that there's a witness here, uh, I feel comfortable saying this to you. And he pulls it out of his bag. I found <laughs> your <laughs> Apple pencil. <laughs> Oh, you're fine. You got two. It's two. Having two is good. Hey, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about assessment. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about assessment because uh, assessment is something that we believe in. It's something yep. that uh, we've gone through and we help other people go through it as well. And uh, we're here at, a, at an Acts 29 conference. Acts 29 is a, is a network of, mm-hmm. of, it's a global network, a global family of churches yep. that plant churches. And so assessment and the assessing of church planters is really, really important to them. It's important to us. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about the need and the value of assessment in churches and in ministries. And Jimmy, when when you think about why we would need something Mm -hmm. like this or why it's valuable, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Bad pastors. For real. Yeah, no, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Every time I see a bad pastor, I think to myself, we need better assessment when it comes to pastors. And I've... I've, uh, uh, worked under a bad pastor. I have, you know, been shepherded by bad pastors. Um, and so I sit there and I think to myself, 
my goodness, I wish like someone had taken this individual through an assessment because some of these individuals, they have a Bible and a bike and all of a sudden they're a church planter. That's a Mormon. Well, yeah, that's that's, a, sorry, that's a, that's <laughs> Bible and a bike. I have a bike. And so, so I mean, yeah, Bible and a bike, they just kind of go off and, right. and they, you know, they have four walls and all of a sudden they start calling themselves bishop or, or yeah, pastor. Right. And so uh, I think when I see things like that and I, and I experience kind of the, uh, for some, for some, some of them were uh, abusive pastors. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it really sh- highlights that need for better pastoral assessment and training. Yeah, yeah. When I think about it, I, I think about the same thing. That we, assessment is valuable because it vets someone, and and if it's done well, mm-hmm. then it connects them to uh, an organization, an authority, or yeah. a local church that would say, "We're sending you." Mm-hmm. It's not you're not just out there doing your own thing. Like we believe in you, uh, and and we're going to confirm mm-hmm. that you should be doing this. So the the assessment really is is a, is a mix of of a number of different things. Yeah, um, and we're going to talk through that a little bit when. When people are getting assessed, whether it's a it's a it's a church planter who's going through the assessment or a, a pastoral candidate, let's say at Redeemer, yeah. um, what are what are some of the things that that they are going through in assessment? Yeah, I, I think that one of the first things is is an evaluation. Uh, there's an evaluation and report upon maybe the individuals, uh, their character, um, their giftings. You know, what are some of their skill sets? Uh, I think even probably an evaluation of what their calling is, I think specifically, um, when we're talking about, uh, church, church planting. Now you've been through the process, Joe, right? Like through a, from Acts 29. I think mm-hmm. you guys just did an assessment Jono. here. Jono just went through the first assessment. I, if I'm all right, first assessment, first assessment here in New Zealand. And I, I see it's not white that your lanyard's not white, but I'm going to just go ahead and name it and claim it that you, you passed. <laughs> And if you didn't, it's it's online forever now that you did. So that's just as good as actually passing. By the way, for, for the listeners who don't know Jono, um, uh, Jono is not just a, a good man, a godly man, a, a pastor, planter, theologian. Um, he's also a strong man, like legit, <laughs> like a legit strong man who wins. So uh, he's a scary church planter uh, is what he is. <laughs> like there's no church discipline problems at Jono's church because people don't play. <laughs> they don't play. Yeah, when 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 I'm so you you talk about there's an evaluation yeah. that goes on of the candidate and a report that's given. Correct. Uh, you mentioned strengths and weaknesses. Yep. Um, and a clarification of calling. I know that um, you know it offers direction, very specific yeah. direction for areas of growth and improvement. And in, uh, so it's not like general. Hey, hope you do better like this. Like a good assessment will pinpoint problem areas mm-hmm. and then give you guidance and direction in a pastoral way. So when I was assessed, this was back in like 08, uh, 1808, yeah. 1808 with um, <laughs> when uh, the old the old X twenty nine, and. Um, so I was there and uh, with my wife, you know, and she's super calm and chill and I'm, I'm nervous and I'm up, uptight. I really want them to like me. Yeah, and she's a like, lot's changed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't care if you like me, obviously. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so I'm there and, um, and my wife's like, don't worry about these guys. God's called you. You do your thing. Don't worry about them. So we go through the whole thing and then afterwards they give me the, the report and I was accepted into X-29. Um, and they said, here are your strengths, right? And like, number one, I'm like, yeah, I figured you would say that. I kind of know that I'm gooder. I'm better. I'm good at that. I'm gooder. You're about to say yeah, gooder. Okay, you were about fine. to say yeah, gooder can't at that. Can't let it go. All right. So I'm gooder at some things. And then uh, the second one, I'm like, okay, I knew that. And then they said the third thing, the best thing about you, what we loved the most was your wife. She's amazing, godly, strong, her countenance. And I'm like, wow, my, Jen got me into X-29. Yeah. And She's then, the church planter that we needed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Praise God for her. And then they gave me three areas to work on. I didn't like that at what, all. What were, what were the three areas? All right. Well, one no, of, I, I, I want to hear this. I want right, to see. Well, the, so, is that okay? Like, yeah. I want to see if you've actually developed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see this. Let's see these three things. Here we well, go. Bet, you, you can't assess me. You've never been assessed yourself. I'm not, not going to okay, assess so you. Okay, so don't judge. But I want to hear it. All right. And by, okay. we'll find out from Michael. Right. Michael can assess you. So the first thing they said was, eh, you're, you're pretty quick to drop big names of people you know. And like I was a name like, dropper? I was a name dropper, they said. And, and, I, and I was like, no, but I, I, it wasn't because I wanted you to think that I was big. It was because I, I wanted yeah. you to know that the big guys like me, mm-hmm. which is the same <laughs> thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I was sitting with Mark, you know, Mark D, yeah. and uh, we're eating some chicken Did, wings, and he said, yeah. hey, enjoy your assessment. That's actually, that actually what that, happened. Yeah. See? Yeah. See? Driscoll he still liked has the, not changed. He liked the sweet barbecue. So anyway, uh, so they called I me out on that. Like, you know, sour. 
No, sweet barbecue. Something, yeah, no. okay. So he, salty uh, and sour. Salty. That sounds more like it. I, I, I was. It, it hurt me to hear it. I was like, dang, that's they really they nailed me. It was really good. And then they were like, all right, you're a good theoretician and theologian on all things missional, but you're not doing the work. So you gotta you gotta do that. Okay. Um, I forget what the third one was. It really impacted yeah, your life. I don't think they were probably wrong on that one. <laughs> they can't get them all right. But it was really helpful for them to like lay it out. And so John was going to get that stuff, mm. right? We're really going to say, you got to work on this. You got to do this. And it was super helpful. They provided coaching and whatnot. Um, so we, we've been talking about church planters here, but, yeah. we all, but we do assessment at our church and every church should do assessment of its leaders, particularly Absolutely. their elder candidates, right? I know that the, there's a few people here that uh, have just completed their elder candidacy so congratulations on that and i think it's i think it's really important um because i mean there's some churches that's it's it there's the danger i think of uh especially if it's the lead pastor that's picking and choosing who the elders are of kind of filling the elder board with yes men mm -hmm. right people that are just going to agree with them or or um kind of go along with whatever decision that they make. But on the flip side of that, then uh, sometimes they look at who are the big givers. Right? Yeah. And so they kind of base the qualifications on who do I need to keep happy? So them, so them checks, you know, them checks keep uh, rolling in. Or just like who's got the business acumen or who's a natural yeah. leader in our culture, in our city, mm -hmm. um, which is the wrong criteria. On Correct. Which we got to look at who's, who's shepherding well, like who right. can shepherd, who's right. gifted to shepherd. And they may be organizational. They may be administrative. They may be gifted in preaching. They may be gifted in discipleship. They may uh, do really well at pastoral care. But if they are not shepherds at heart, yeah. uh, then that, that has to be that main criteria for as you're assessing uh, a candidate to be an elder. So it's not just though, when we talk about church planters, we've been talking about elder candidates, but I would also say, you know, there needs to be an assessment uh, across the board when it comes to deacons, sure. when it comes to ministry leaders, yep. there has to be some sort of program or process in place that as you're, uh, as you're training up young men and women uh, to be able to assess them and, and to help encourage them to be growing in the gifts mm -hmm. and to be utilizing the gifts that, that God has given them within the, within the local church. So you were, I said you weren't assessed, but you really were assessed at Redeemer as an elder candidate. You were an elder candidate for like five years. I think it was like six months. F five, five years and six months, maybe. Six months. Longest I know, I elder so, candidate. Hey, where was homeboy over there? Richard, what, a year and a half? Is that what it was? Where did Richard, Nobody oh, cares. Richard's not even here. All right. Year and a half. Thank you, Richard. It's about, I'm on par. Okay. With Richard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, no, that, yeah, great look company. at that smile. I'll go yeah. with that. Oh, he's handsome. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. After, I don't know. Anyways. So, so when, when, right. when, when you were, when you were being assessed, um, what were the things that, like, like you said, mm -hmm. so I'll, let me preface that. You tell us what were the, the most valuable aspects of your ongoing assessment from us. Yep. Um, but we didn't pick Jimmy because he runs a company. Um, we didn't pick Jimmy because uh, he agrees with everything that I say or what another guy says. We wanted Jimmy to be an elder because he had the heart of a shepherd. Um, he was invested in the local church. He met the qualifications for an elder and he had gifts and competencies that complemented our weaknesses on the elder team. Specifically, he's better at organization, administration and problem solving and that kind of stuff than I am or Pat is. Yeah. Or yeah, Jeff double true, is double true, triple um, true. and you're more like Brian in that way. Like you do have yeah. similar gifts. Yeah, Pastor so, Brian and I are probably like the the brains and heart of the elder board. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. I'm just the mouth. That's yeah. all I am. Yeah. I get to talk. So you, <laughs> what what did you find to be like helpful in the assessment um, in the process that you went through? Yeah, uh, a few things that I found uh, off the top of my head that were helpful were, uh, even though I wasn't officially an elder, but I was invited to the elder meetings, right? And so I was, I would be part of the meetings. I would be asked to participate in the meetings. Uh, now there were some conversations that the elders had separate without uh, Rob and I, which which is understood. Um, not many, very, not many very though. Few. It had to be a, a pretty, uh, probably strong case of church discipline of some sort. Um, that uh, then we'd be brought in later. Um, but it was that process there of um, actually giving my opinion, actually giving my thoughts, and then having people push back at me, um, and then learning to push them back uh, as well. Um, I thought that process, at least for me, was really helpful because uh, I would come into the, the elder meetings at the beginning and would just kind of say things like, uh, I don't know if it's my place to say, but 
Joe, what you said is stupid. And I would feel really awkward, you know, saying that. Um, and then they would actually tell me, you know, later on, just like, no, stop, stop apologizing. Just stop, get to it. Just get to it. Uh, you're not going to offend people here because if you can't speak your mind here and we can't receive that and discuss it and debate it and, um, uh, and still know that we're all brothers in Christ, then we, none of us should be here. Right. Right. And so, I mean, I, I learned really fast how to uh, be OK being open and honest and direct with my other brothers. Uh, so that was part of it. But the other the second one um, was going alongside other pastors, uh, other some of the other elders like uh, Pastor Jeff during pastoral care. Like when we go visit um, individuals, we go, you know, visit people that uh, that were struggling. Uh, we go pray for people. Uh, I would go with Jeff to kind of discipline some guys um, that uh, were not uh, caring for their families very well. And Make so, it sound a little weird. Not to discipline them, but those who are so under discipline. we would take them, and I, we'd have a paddle, and I'd, I, I'd hold them down, and Jeff would... The, the spanking is reserved for actual elders. Yeah, once you become an elder, and they give you a paddle. Uh, yeah. That's that's part of it. The discipline, the rod of the Lord you just is what mean it says. If somebody was under church discipline, yes, you would, would go and under church discipline, you, you would go and correct them, yeah. uh, or, or do encourage them, uh, depending on what the situation called for. So, actually, walking alongside the elders in pastoral care uh, was was really beneficial in the assessment, uh, and then just over. Th- Throughout the whole process, having each of the elders speak into my life and to pinpoint areas of my life that were weak and some issues that I had and the things that in my heart that I need to, to deal with. Sometimes they'd bring it up in front of everybody. Other times, most often, uh, they would, you know, tell me one on one, mainly Pastor Brian, uh, would tell me, you know, one on one kind of things that he's seeing. Uh, in my life, and I would receive that in in, in love, and and it know. keeps happening today. Like we all continue to get that kind of feedback yeah. because of that relationship. All right, so let's get to it. Like um, let's give some advice to people who are being assessed mm-hmm. and uh, those who are doing the assessing. Right, so um, because it's it's easy to go into that situation as either the assessor or the assessee mm-hmm. and make a mess. Right. Yeah. So um, what is uh, what's something that we, you would say to a person who is going in to be assessed? Like John, which already has gone in, but if Mm-hmm. Somebody else is going in for this sort of a thing. What do you What do you tell them? I think be honest. Uh, you need to be honest uh, with the people that are assessing you when they're asking you questions and they're asking you questions about your marriage, questions about what you believe, questions about your struggles and and uh, questions about your joys and where you see your strengths and your weaknesses. You need to be honest with them mm-hmm. um, because that's the that's the point of the process. The point of the process is to delve deep into whether or not you are called and qualified to plant a church or to be an elder or to be a ministry leader. And so it's kind of like a bait and switch to why would you, if you felt the need to lie there, then yeah. what is it that you're trying to hide? Right. And I get that sometimes it's, it's defensiveness or self-esteem and pride and things like that. And, but if you, if you can't be honest about that, then there, there, that's a situation there that you need to deal with, uh, on, on your heart in your own time. But it's not just being honest with them, but be honest with yourself. Go in with these temperate expectations that, Listen, you are not that church planter that's going to hit the ground running and all of a sudden your church is going to boom and you're going to have the, the greatest church that mm-hmm. New Zealand has ever seen, right? right. Um, and just be honest that you, you don't have it all together. Your theology is not perfect. Your walk is not, is, is, uh, is, what's, what's the word? Walk is crooked. It's not straight. I don't know. You struggle in your walk with God. Some of us, uh, you know, your marriages, uh, and your family life is, is, is on edge because of the pressure that you're dealing with uh, in, in ministry. So be honest with yourself in the same regard. And so that way you can receive the, the uh, correction uh, in the way that it's meant to be given in love. Yeah. And you, you sort of spoke uh, on this when you said, be honest with yourself, that it um, and to temper your expectations. I mean, what, what you're saying there, right, is, is to be humble um, mm. because, listen, uh, I've assessed a lot of church planters at this point, And uh, a lot of them think and I've, I've had some of them say to me, I'm not planting a church. I'm starting a movement. We're going to take over the city of Chicago. And it's like, no, you're not. No, nah, you just, you're you just, not doing that. You just create a dumpster fire of a yeah, church. Stop oh, it. Gosh, it. So um, you want to be humble because you got to be ready to receive the feedback that you're going to get. And with that, you got to be secure mm. in Jesus because you could get a big, fat, ugly no from these assessors. In fact, oh, I, re- yeah. <laughs> I can remember, like, we've, we've done a number... So I won't mention the, like the church or the, or the pastor, but it was Mark Driscoll at Mars Hill. And um, he, like, so they would have guys 
who would, they would send, right? They would send these guys uh, to plant a church in Chicago. And um, it would be a big no. What? I don't know what's going on. I'm moving right. back away from you. I don't know what this thing is. So anyways, it would be a big no. All right. Can I turn this off? Because <laughs> it's... Is it me or you? I don't know. It's, oh, Sorry, well, we're having feedback. All right. All right I can go. talk loud if I need to. So they, they, they would send these guys to come and to, uh, you know, plant a church. And the, all the assessors would go, you guys aren't ready to plant a church. Your family's a mess. Your theology's a mess. You have no business planting a church. And even though your church, which is a big church in the network, said you're ready to go, we're going to say no. And when we would send them back... The, the parent church, Mark and all those guys would say, yeah, they're right. We've got to listen to them. You just have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. You're not ready. So we got ahead of ourselves. So you want to be humble and you want to be secure in Christ because ultimately your identity is not found in a particular ministry. It's found in the Savior. Yeah. All right. So what about assessing others? If you're in the position to assess other people, um, what, what are you going to say to those guys? Well, I think the same thing that we were talking about before. I think uh, you need to be honest. You need to be honest with the individual about what you're seeing in their life. And I think I, I, I love that story that even though, you know, uh, in, in this case, the church planter, you know, being assessed was coming from from the church. Mother of, church. The, the, yeah, the mother church of, of, of 829. Um, that they understood. Listen, they're being honest with you. They're being, you know, they're being uh, uh really forceful and direct with you you need to receive that so you know as as i think sometimes we get afraid of like okay are we going to hurt somebody and you know are we going to hurt their feelings are they going to be angry and you know i want i want to play nice with everyone but the reality is this if you you need to be honest with that person that you're assessing because if they should not be there Mm. you cannot let them loose on on a church you cannot let them loose in a community because they could do some real damage they could do some real damage uh, to whatever neighborhood or community that that you're sending them, and they're not ready. And even not just that, they could do damage to their marriage. Mm-hmm. If their marriage is not ready, and you're seeing that, and you're sending them out there despite that, then you're sending their marriage to the slaughter. Yeah, and that's on you. So you got to be honest with with those that you're assessing. And to be honest. Um like that, I think, requires humility, right? Yeah. Because you are not, you're not assessing because you're the man. You're not assessing because you're the sharpest person in the room. You're assessing because you either have some experience or because you've learned some things along the way. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you do it right. It means that you can recognize truth and error. It means you can recognize health um, and an unhealthy person or marriage. And so you should be humble, not thinking much of yourself, but uh, recognizing like God's given me this uh, opportunity to help, to serve, right? And so uh, you're not coming in as the man in charge. You're coming in trying to help a brother and or sister in a particular situation get to the place where they're going to be most fruitful. So humility is definitely key. Uh, We've been kind of skirting around this. uh, So don't do what we did and skirting around it. You got to be direct. Right. As you're assessing people, be direct. Let them know exactly what you're thinking. Uh, don't try to sugarcoat it. You know, I'm not saying be cruel. Don't be don't be like Kylum over here. And but uh, uh, you really just want to be be you know gracious in that. Uh, but just, yeah, be direct with people what you're seeing and uh, to to help them progress. Yeah. And um, I would say be charitable. Um, yeah. especially cause like you'll be assessing and at times you're either going to want to teach somebody a lesson because they're proud or you're just going to be too nitpicky, right? Some of us in leadership can be really uptight and nitpicky about particular things. Uh, be charitable, give people the benefit of the doubt, let them explain themselves, assume yeah. the best of them unless you learn otherwise. Um, and, you know, not everybody's going to have the same gift set, right? So you yeah. might be a super compassionate person and not a super articulate theologian. And so you may not care as much about theology and you may care a whole lot about somebody's demeanor toward other people. Just you, you're going to have to realize like, well, you know what? Um, just because they aren't as charitable as you are, it doesn't mean that they are disqualified. So you, you just want to be kind, compassionate and yeah. give people the benefit of the doubt as you can uh, because nobody's perfect. We're not looking for mm-hmm. perfect people. We're looking for qual- qualified people yeah. who are called uh, to do these things. And I think if they, if they wanted to do assessment, mm-hmm. if, they, if, they, if people are going to be assessed and they want to prepare for assessment or if they're going to be assessing people and they want to prepare for that, what kind of tool should they use to prepare? <laughs> what do you think? Maybe Lagos Bible that software. That was the worst transition I've ever that heard. That was awesome. As soon as that you was said brilliant. That, I saw where you're going. I'm mm-hmm. like, that was ridiculous. That was amazing. <laughs> no, you're welcome, Lagos. 
<laughs> um, you know what? I'm, I want to apologize to Derek over at Lagos. I feel like you paid for so much more than that. Nah, that's about all they're getting. <laughs> that's all they're getting. You so, were supposed to introduce it like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I know. I forgot. Yeah. And so, uh, so right now, actually, uh, uh, Lagos 8 has just been released. It's nice. It's nice. It's really good. We got some, uh, we got Lagos 8 just a, a couple weeks ago. A week ago, yeah. A week or so ago, so we could kind of play around with it. It's it's nice and clean. Uh, it's faster, too. Did you notice that? It's yep. actually, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, you could go ahead and grab Lagos 8, but first, before you grab it, take this week uh, to try to win it. And so right now, if you head on over to the show notes, you can grab the graphic that we have, the description and the hashtag, and share it all over social media, and you yourself could win Logos 8 Reform Silver uh, package. Boom. And boom. That thing is fantastic. You're going to want to grab it. Uh, but for everybody else, if you wanted to just go pick it up because you're like, you know what? I ain't going to win, or I don't have social media. Or, or maybe you want diamond like we have. Yeah, well, thanks. Diamond. <laughs> Why you, Status. If you want to do that, you can head Status on over right to logos.com uh, slash doctrine, mm -hmm. and they've got an exclusive offer there for Doctrine Devotion listeners. they got a nice little discount there for you, and so head on over there, uh, logos.com slash doctrine. Right on. Mm. All right, so, Jimmy, if people want to join the conversation, they want to give us some feedback on their experience with assessment, yep. uh, what do they do? Uh, you can head on the website, DrVotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Doc and Devo, or on Facebook, slash Doctrine and Devotion. I did it backwards, so now in my head, I'm trying to go through what I'm supposed to say. Huh? So I'm just going to say Fresh Pod listening. every Monday and Thursday, blog mm -hmm. posts on Wednesdays, video content on Fridays. No, we don't. Yeah, There's we no video content Whatever, on Friday. Whatever, just stop it. Stop it later. Later.